Well, on Wednesday, we told you about the messy recall election involving Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker and five other Republicans. Today, we're taking a deep dive into the Wisconsin Senate race and the battle to replace retiring Democratic Senator Herb Cole, the four-term senator, hadn't been seriously challenged since his first election in 1988. But now that he's decided to call it quits, quits Republicans see an opportunity. Four major candidates are in the running to trial try and steal this seat from the Democrats, former Congressman Mark Newman, Assembly Speaker Jeff Fitzgerald, local businessman Eric Hovde, and former Wisconsin Governor and Bush Administration HHS Secretary Tommy Thompson. Now, Newman and Hovde and Thompson appear locked in a three-man three contest to take on the sole major Democratic candidate, Congresswoman Tammy Baldwin. From the beginning on the Republican side, Thompson has said his time as Wisconsin's longest-serving governor makes him the best choice to face Baldwin. Right now, the polls that I've seen, I'm the only one that beats her. After spending 14 years in the governor's mansion, Thompson has some name recognition, but it may be a double-edged sword. Despite the fact that he hasn't been on a ballot since 1998, he is a known quantity around the state, and in, a, and in the primary, he's likely to be cast in the role of incumbent. That hasn't gone so well so far for some Republicans. What's more, the conservative club for growth, fresh off the defeat of veteran Indiana Senator Dick Luger, they're setting their sights on Thompson. Tommy Thompson has been a politician since way back in 1966. But do you know his record? When it comes to Obamacare, there's this. Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger of California and New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg came out in support of reform, as does Republican Tommy Thompson, a former Wisconsin governor. Tommy Thompson, not what we need in the U.S. Senate. He's hoping to benefit from a three-way race that Hovde, the businessman here, ends up taking on and becoming the alternative along with Mark Newman. Now, all this shapes up well for now for Congresswoman Baldwin, who could benefit from a long, contentious Republican primary. Remember, Thompson, Newman, and Hovde will have to fight it out for another four months before voters go to the polls. Baldwin is already out raising the two of them and uh, pulling in $2 million in the first quarter, more than the entire Republican field combined. But there's a little more here at play. In 1998, Congresswoman Baldwin became the first openly gay person to be elected to Congress as a non-incumbent. Now she's running to be the first openly gay U.S. Senator in American history. And if she ends up facing Mark Newman in the general election, gay rights could very well become an issue. Back in 1997, Newman said the gay and lesbian lifestyle was unacceptable and that he would never hire a gay person for fear that they would try to promote their agenda. So far, Congresswoman Baldwin has downplayed her sexuality in her own campaign, although she called for gay marriage to be a plank in the Democratic Party platform. She also says the president's announcement yesterday was personally gratifying. She said, quote, these are values I share uh, and that we all share, and I, uh, that I take pride in the president's recognition today comes not just at a deeply personal level, but also because he has done the right thing for so many people. I am pleased that the president has today joined a growing number of people across the country who are moving forward on the issue of marriage equality and equal opportunity for all Americans. Well, joining me now is Wisconsin's Democratic Congresswoman and front runner for the Democratic Senate nomination, Tammy Baldwin. Congresswoman, good morning. Good morning. It's great to join you. All right. I want to ask you uh, about uh, the president's announcement yesterday uh, and the difference between the symbolic nature of the announcement, but also at the same time, the president seeming to make it clear that this was a symbolic endorsement and they didn't plan on proactively getting the federal government involved in the marriage issue. You know, I was really moved when I watched the interview with the president. I thought it was a very heartfelt uh, statement that the president issued about his own personal journey. And I, I think it's a journey shared by so many Americans as they grapple with this issue. Um, I, I applaud the president and I think it was a very important statement yesterday. Do you find that this, that your the sexual orientation comes up on the campaign trail. You got elected in Madison, Madison, a very uh, liberal community. You're now running statewide. Uh, do you find it coming up as you've traveled the state? Chuck, I can tell you it almost never comes up because people are squarely focused on jobs and bolstering our middle class in Wisconsin, and that's my focus. And uh, I know that when uh, voters go to the polls in November, that's gonna be number one on their mind. I want to get to your race here in a second, but one more question on gay marriage. What can be done on the federal level by a presidential administration that right now the president doesn't seem like he's ready to do? 
You know, this president has actually shown bold leadership on this issue starting many, many, many months ago when uh, he uh, said that he has come to the conclusion after lots of study that the Defense of Marriage Act is unconstitutional. And he showed leadership with uh, the Attorney General and the Department of Justice in terms of uh, what his administration is going to do when the Defense of Marriage Act is challenged. Um, but really, the uh, role of defining marriage is fallen to the states. It always has been with the states. And Should so it be? I, I, I mean, you know, I know it always has been. Absolutely. Should it be? Should we have 50 different laws on marriage? We have since the founding of this country, and I don't see anything changing. All right, let me go to the state of politics in Wisconsin, if you will. I imagine it's pretty hard to be a U.S. Senate candidate right now and to get much attention, given all of the focus on the recall election. What, uh, what kind of fallout do you expect to impact your Senate race in the fall from this, no matter what happens? Well, I can tell you that Wisconsinites are engaged like I've never seen them before. And this is really a grassroots movement that you've seen across Wisconsin starting last year and then with the collection of over a million signatures early this year. It's really phenomenal. If you think about it, that's one in every four adults who decided to do something to participate in their democracy. And I think that momentum is going to go throughout the year. People are certainly focused right now on the June 5th recall and electing right. Tom Barrett as our next governor, but I think that momentum is going to continue throughout the year. And part of uh, the, well, not just part of it, a main focus is really getting Wisconsin's economy back on track. Working people and middle class families in Wisconsin are struggling so mightily right now, and they want a champion, a fighter, and that's what they'll find in me. When, when is somebody going to call a timeout on the toxi toxicity in Wisconsin? It feels like this recall is going to be a 51-49 race, no matter what happens. And is that really going to have decided anything? You're going to have 49% feeling dissatisfied with the result. And do you worry that that's going to contribute to what is a more polarized c climate already? You know. I think what, what we're seeing right now in our state is a race between the incumbent, who's a divider, and uh, Tom Barrett, who's uh, there to unite the state. And that's why a million people at the grassroots level signed petitions to recall the governors. They want to bring the state back together. I think we're seeing engagement like we've never seen it before, but I think we're also trying to bring Wisconsin back together. What we've seen happen in our state over the last year and a half goes against basic Wisconsin values of fairness yeah. and progress. And really what we want to see is our economy back on track, uh, hardworking families giving a, given a fair shake in our state and our country. And that's what these elections are going to be about, both the recall you, and the general right. uh, U.S. Senate race. Very quickly, do you, do you worry, though, that there's going to be like a cycle of recall, if you will, in Wisconsin politics, where it seems about every six months somebody's getting recalled? You know, I think that this chapter will be closed after this summer. Uh, this was a very rare occurrence, but also one that uh, it was sprung up from the grassroots. I don't think you can replicate that on a routine basis. This was Wisconsinites feeling like their values were uh, threatened and uh, that they were being deceived by their public officials, including uh, the governor of Wisconsin. And that's what you saw unfold in Wisconsin. I don't see that happening again. Uh, uh, these circumstances won't present themselves, I hope, again for a long, right. long time. Tammy Baldwin, Democratic candidate for the U.S. Senate in Wisconsin and member of Congress from Wisconsin. Thanks for coming on this morning. Thank you, Chuck.